No, that yeah, definitely yeah. is not. They just put more context the into the discussion. In the opening statement of Prime Minister Hun Sen, he, he described the challenges that are facing ASEAN on the global front. These are the uh, European debt crisis, the U.S. fiscal cliff, the slowdown in Asian economic growth, the current conflict in the Middle East between Israel and uh, Hamas, the challenges of climate change, and the cross-border transnational crimes, no, like drug trafficking and trafficking of human persons. And he said that there is an imperative to attain faster and equitable growth in the region. And then the segue was into the point that we have to min that maintaining regional peace and security is indispensable to ASEAN growth. Therefore, we must conduct, uh, he said, no, we must conduct purposive dialogue uh, their dialogue partners and ad address the issues under an ASEAN uh, under the ASEAN Political Security Community Blueprint. No? Take note that the whole theme no, is really moving towards the ASEAN Community of 2015, and there are three pillars of that community. the The three pillars are the political, security, economic, and then social cultural. So, pinala, gusto nilang palakasin yung political security community. And that is the context for all of this. Uh, yung, within ASEAN, the member states really want to move purposefully towards a stronger political security community, which is indispensable if the region is going to achieve uh, economic growth. So, yun ang, con yun ang pinaka context. No? We, we count our community. Among our challenges then is how to sustain and perhaps even accelerate the gains we have made because there is a feeling among all ASEAN leaders that said one of the key factors that ASEAN seems to be weathering a lot of the world's challenges is the fact that we are holding together. More than at any other time in the history of our organization, unity has become the bedrock of our shared progress. And it is the same principle that informs the imperatives that my country deems important to further development of our common goals. So it's not, I'm just worried that the paragraph na yun lalabas na, you know, we're here. No, we're not. There, there's a very, there was a very good preamble, it was a very good layout before it came out. Um, you said you've discussed with the OCN, is the OCN actually at the plenary. May I ask, at um, there was, sorry, there was no discussion on the DOC and the COC. The decision po is the DOC was 10 years ago started. And what was said in the plenary is that it, uh, quite a number of the countries, as mentioned by Secretary Coloma, already agreed that we need to further from the DOC into an actual COC. Okay. Um, do you think that there will be um, a statement that will be issued on the 10th anniversary of the declaration of the DOC? I, I wouldn't want to preempt the host because that, that's going to be the call of Cambodia. Although the or Premier Hong Chen was very clear and specific and he said, we will include everything that is said in these sessions in the final statement that they done. Uh, Ma'am, I cannot answer that. I'll let DFA answer that. Uh, we hope uh, Secretary De Rosario can come this afternoon and, and answer the specific points on that point. So, um, Secretary De Rosario will have a briefing also? Uh, well, I'm not sure. Well, by process, no, by process, even before the start of the opening session and the plenary session today, we there were ministerial this. meetings. No? Mm -hmm. As it happened during the Asia-Europe meeting, it is customary in gatherings like this for the foreign ministries no, to do some spade work no, in drafting and crafting the final communique. No. So let's just, uh, let's just wait no, what it will be, uh, what it will finally contain. But we can be assured that sufficient groundwork has already been uh, undertaken at the ministerial level no, before the convening of the heads of states uh, plenary this morning and their retreat this afternoon. Yes. Would you agree that the clear demonstration of ASEAN solidarity, is it the grouping can convince China to formally put down for negotiations on the DOC? I think we have to appreciate and analyze this within the total context of what ASEAN is trying to do. No? 
I don't think it's productive to just zero in on just the relationship between ASEAN and a country. Precisely, this is a multilateral uh, summit. There are so many summits that will be conducted uh, that will complement the main event, which is the ASEAN summit. There is the ASEAN plus three dialogue partners between Japan, China, and Korea. There's an ASEAN-Japan, ASEAN-US, ASEAN-East Asia Summit. We have to take all of this in context and not isolate ASEAN uh, versus or ASEAN vis-a-vis -vis X country. You know? I think the, the proper context to appreciate all of this is the entire program, which is really multilateral in character. No, I think um, the president, together with the m with the rest of the cabinet, is prepared for this for this whole next three days. Now, uh, we what we worked on this for about two weeks from the time we arrived in the ASEM, We actually started working on all the details. No, um, the tone. And sorry for taking it up. It's just I was very worried about the the first uh, the first plenary statement. Okay, uh, it's the first session. It's the it's the opening salvo. And uh, everybody wants to set the right tone. I just wanted to emphasize that our president equally was on on that format. The rest will. Parang ano di ba telenovela hintay na lang natin. Alam naman natin matatapos tayo by Tuesday. So uh, we have a. Uh, uh, there are varying topics, of varying degrees of of, uh, of different perspectives that will roll out. Mainly because each venue, each each this each uh, forum is of a different nature. Po. There is an agenda for every item, by the way. So mm. you you need to work within that agenda. But there was really, there was really a palpable sense of solidarity you know, in the. Yeah. You can feel you know, that the chemistry among the heads of state is really quite good. Uh, there, it wasn't a very heavy type of session. You know. uh, it was spiced by some uh, uh, levity. And uh, most of the st well, most of the statements began with the expressions of condolences on the death of King uh, Sihanouk, and also to felicitate the outgoing as well as the incoming uh, secretaries general. And each of the heads of state was really in a, in a mood of uh, establishing rapport and cooperation. It, it's very palpable; you could feel it in the in the plenary hall. This is something that the foreign, the, minist the ministers of foreign affairs of the different countries will be discussing. So that that's something they'll probably be driving at, the, at that level, Paul. The President Obama has always been very helpful but to the Philippines. To voice it out tomorrow. Then that's part of the telenovela. <laughs> Let's wait. It's a very strong signal of sorts no? about what uh, what he wants to say, which is the U.S. pivot, um, the relevance of Asia to the rest of the world. So we, I haven't seen President Obama's statement, so I cannot, I wouldn't know what he's going to say for. The other overarching concern of all the heads of state is the movement towards 2015. Because there is a common yeah. and a shared commitment to establish the ASEAN community yeah. by 2015. And they, they all said that this is important for the credibility of ASEAN as a regional grouping. And the agenda is really quite hefty. You know? there are the, they have the three pillars roadmap that we mentioned earlier. There, there's this master plan on ASEAN connectivity, the initiative for ASEAN integration, and Prime Minister Hun Sen uh, specifically mentioned three important items, no? the resolution of the tariff and non-tariff uh, yeah. issues, the investment liberalization, then the con connectivity and transportation, and then uh, SME development. So these are all very important concerns. No? Even the, the West Philippine Sea is, is just one of the 
vital items in the agenda. Yeah. So we really have to understand everything in context. If there was something that the ministers, um, that the heads were concerned about, was really the 2015 deadline. As a matter of fact, a, a mm. number of them said, that's not very far off. It's just <laughs> around the corner and there's still a lot to be done. Mm. So I, if, correct me if I'm wrong, more than half of the, of the, more than half of them said, you know, this this is not a joking matter. Let's mm. take the bulls by the horn. Let's face up to it. And that's why there was a call that said it's very important that, that this happened within 2015 para to show the world that ASEAN can make it happen. Po. Yes. Definitely. Uh, this was also the one of the themes, one of the strategic themes in the President's bilateral meetings as well as statements in the Asia-Europe meeting. The protection of the rights of our migrant workers. Yeah, sorry to push off a lot topic, but one of the main one of the main wins in the ASEM in Vientiane was really the issue of, you know, European Union assuring the President that don't worry, you know, we're we know there's a lot of Filipinos working here. We know there's what seventy one thousand seafarers involved. We are gonna be we are gonna make sure that the, their rights will be respected. Po. So, uh, not naman that there's no other topic to discuss. But you know, if Europe is willing to provide that assurance, President also wants to make sure that we do have that same framework within our neighborhood. Po. Yes, DJ. Mm -hmm. uh, recently it came under criticism because of uh, concerns that uh, it does not address uh, or it does not uh, fall, uh, it falls short of international standards and, and recently it was announced that a paragraph was inserted into the declaration to, uh, to take into account those criticisms. Uh, what was the Philippines' role in the insertion of that paragraph? Because I heard that it was actually May I suggest po, that we will ask Secretary Del Rosario, <laughs> no, because uh, that that it would be better we'd, we'd be paraphrasing, and we're not really competent to do, to answer that because we were not there during the discussions. If you ask what the Philippines' role was, I can explain to you that during our preparatory meetings for this, the president's pushed towards this, and was really for the migrant workers for the Filipinos who are working in all these other countries in the region. Now, as to the framing of that particular statement, maybe Secretary De Rosario will be in a better position to answer it, Paul. Sorry, I don't mean to evade the question. We're not evading <laughs> it. It's just that we're not competent to answer it, to be, true, to be truthful about it. No, we were not. There was a hold back on the, we were supposed, we were already at the scheduled time Mm. And there are challenges to to Logistics. activities like this, mm. yung timing, non departure, and ano. So um, this is better. Not like um, don't mean to ano, but you know, Vientiane was was really difficult with with twenty one heads of state and all that. No? So there's a problem yung kasi di ba may plenary first welcome nandun si. Premier Hun Sen, he wants to welcome one of them, so yung sequencing po nun was critical. I'm sure the Cambodian organizers are trying to do their very best to, to make things happen. So. Yes, ma'am. Malaysia has issued an appeal for ASEAN to do more for the Rakhine Muslims and for the Rohingya Muslims in the Rakhine State in Myanmar. Can the Philippines share the concern of that, you know, the, the ASEAN should be taking a more active role in Again, I'm not competent to answer that. I was not part of any discussion to that effect. But uh, going on the premise of the po of the policies or the statement that we've had, I'm, there's a good chance we are. Um, Premier Najib mentioned in his plenary intervention the peace in Mindanao, and he was mentioning it in the context of that there can be a duplication or pwedeng sa ibang lugar kung kailangan dapat gawin na rin to, no? Um, even in Vientiane, President Najib was, I mean, Premier Najib was talking about that also. 
Uh, he's form he wants to form a group who's from uh anong term ng grupo niya? Uh, sorry, I I kind of forgot he used the term eh, na yung trying to create peace and 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 uh, and unity among diverse religion or cultural situations po. Yeah, Premier Najib said no, that it is essential that the region is free of internal conflict. I guess the specific issue you mentioned just now is an is an aspect of that. No? It's a form of internal conflict. And he also, uh, well, he made reference, of course, to the resolution of the 40-year conflict in, uh, in Mindanao. And he said it's important to address legitimate concerns but in, in all of this, it is likewise important to reject violence and extremism and adopt moderation in dealing with conflict so that ASEAN can show the world that we are an area of peace and cooperation. I think that's the context in which we should appreciate our cooperation with Malaysia and all the other member states of ASEAN. Other questions? The president, by the way, was also keeping tabs on the Israeli-Hamas situation through Secretary Del Rosario. There are 100 Filipinos in the Gaza area and 41,000 in Israel. And according to Secretary Del Rosario, the rapid response teams of the DFA are already on the move. And they know what to do in order to get the Filipinos out of harm's way in that area. So the president, as he has always done, whenever he's in a, an overseas uh, engagement, he makes sure you know, that all of the other important issues are properly addressed. And this is uh, what he has done. I think they have certain uh, policies you know, yung in accordance with the rapid response. What the, uh, what the Philippine Embassy in Tel Aviv has been doing was calling the Filipinos in Gaza. And all of the people that were contacted already have said that they would rather stay there for the time being. Um, the, I the Philippine Embassy in Egypt has formed a team and is actually, uh, I think the only open bounder, uh, border is the Egypt-Gaza border because the, the Gaza-Israeli border is effectively closed. Right? So th if the Filipinos decide to move out, there will be the Egypt, the Philippine embassy in Egypt will be ready to handle them, and they're actually there. They have presence in the border now. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, U.S. President Obama has been very vocal in supporting Israel in this conflict. Does the president have uh, a position in regard to the relationship? Um, I would. I would. I mean, I. I won't bench. I. I won't paraphrase the president's point, though, but maybe that's a discussion that can happen in this forum also. Uh, the, the, I think the key elements why President Obama has been very vocal is because he's trying to uh, to get the the neighborhood there to. Uh, the last report I read was even the Turkish government has stepped in already, and the uh, Egyptian head of state actually went into into the Gaza Strip, and then there's another one. I think the Jordanian delegation was also there. Everybody's calling for a uh, for a ceasefire, a halt, to to try to defuse the situation. Paul. I think it's critical, Paul, because um, the whole point of having that six point is really uh, setting the stage on how the details are going to be worked out. So if you have 10 countries have agreed, the DOC was the document that said we're going to start writing about it. The DOC was at a specific purpose and said these are the things na puede, these are the things na hindi puede. But there was no discussion on the eventual resolution of the situation. That is where the COC will hopefully come in how we will all conduct ourselves in this in this area as well. Sir, pati after ng news from Manila, yung news na Senator William Sanchiago and their abrogate the DOC. Hmm. We will consult the president. <laughs> We are not, unfortunately, I'm not the spokesperson <laughs> nor authorized. Yeah, there's a agree. process for, yeah. for that. No? And it, we will have to involve all the relevant stakeholders, including the legislature, because remember the treaty was ratified by our Senate. No? So I think uh, it will have to, to go through a process of uh, review and assessment 
by all the relevant stakeholders concerned. So this is the president's statement. He did not read. He did, you know, if by now you know the president doesn't read things. He writes and reads it. On the contrary, I think it was very firm in the context that it stated the, the key elements that he wanted to say. That would be uh, that would be uh, that would be a subjective opinion, po, no? But uh, I, I think. Uh, what what we wanted, uh, it's just that the, it was such a nice plenary session. There would be a say that it was an attempt on the part of all the leaders there to lend to the LA I think that that was the prevalent uh, mood of the plenary, that everybody was there to settle things, not to create problems, not to create divisions, but to see uh, centrality was, was key to it. Po. The mood, the mood really was to demonstrate solidarity. I think that's, yeah. that's the term that they wanted to put forth. No? So that yung picture taking nila na formal way, Asian way. <laughs> I think na feel na feel nila yon. <laughs> <laughs> and you mentioned, sir, um, natatawa po kayo sa, dito, sa statement ng Cambodian Prime Minister Ranina. And you said it started on equal footing. Uh, on the Good yeah. yeah. Why do you say so, sir? Um, is it because uh, in the past Cambodia uh, blocked efforts? No, no, no. I think um, I, I, me, what I felt was, and this is a personal opinion, uh, I felt that he he set the tone by saying, "We're here to you know to to do things, to solve things, not to not not to argue, not to create problems or what. We're here." Maganda yung paglatag niya eh, during the yeah. opening statement. So yeah, he, he first, drinawing niya muna yung landscape. No? Ano ba nangyayari yeah, ngayon? Yeah. Ano yung mga challenges? Ano yung mga opportunities? Kaya nga, para maunawaan lahat ng mga specific steps in context. No? And then he emphasized the urgency of working together to achieve the goals of the ASEAN Community yeah. 2015. So talagang overarching yung, ano eh, yung kailangan magkaisa tayo dahil 2015 is uh, not too far off. And it's essential to the credibility of ASEAN. No? Para paniwalaan ng tao na may kabuluhan niyang ASEAN, eh pakita naman natin. No? Kasi I think in the present reckoning, only about 72 to 75% of all the agreements that need to be ratified by everybody no? have been... Uh, have been uh, signed, sealed, and delivered. No? So parang there's some more work to be done. No? And everybody is on their toes. No? Maraming mga, uh, tsaka daming mga specific uh, deliverables. Uh, deliverables no? Kanina, at the end of the plenary, aside from the ASEAN Declaration on Human Rights, they also adopted the Bali Concord 3 Plan of Action for 2013 yeah, to 20. 17. You will recall that in 2011, during the chairmanship of Indonesia, no, one of the summits was held in Bali. And doon, nag-adapt sila ng Concord 3 Plan of Action for 2013-2017, which goes beyond, it even goes beyond 2015. No. Uh, tapos, later, there is this regional, uh, yung RCEP, Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership. Yeah framework there will also be a, an a extensive asean global dialogue yeah. no? kaya siksik na siksik no hitik na hitik tong agenda nila <laughs> talagang the, I, you you could sense no that they they all mean to to achieve many things and to to get things done no? kaya they, they were really the, the comments that were given during the plenary session were mutually reinforcing no? and demonstrating that on all of these salient points, no, there was a strong unity among the member states of ASEAN. Well, you can be sure that the nearest Philippine consulate or embassy no, would have uh, 
immediately taken action to establish the identity, to get in touch with the nearest kin, and also to provide uh, immediate uh, assistance, no? medical or otherwise. No? There are protocols that our Department of Foreign Affairs is uh, dutifully following. Uh, and, uh, and this is because uh, that's one of the priorities of diplomatic posts. No? Attention to nationals. No? That's one of the three uh, important uh, priorities of any diplomatic officer. No? So you can be sure na inaasikaso na kaagad dyan. No? I, I, I need to set also the tone in the press briefings. No? Um, there are plenary sessions and there are retreats. The reason why Secretary Coloman and I can talk about what he said, what he said, or what somebody else said is because it was a plenary session. Mm -hmm. When it is a retreat, um, it's kind of closed, right? We can speak about what our president said. We can speak about, you know, depending on how, how the result of the retreat is. So. <laughs> Please do not expect that if the briefing is about a retreat, that we will be that we will be talking about what the other heads of state said, because we will not. We're not supposed to, and we will respect the convention and the protocol of of those sessions. The, bi the, the the dialogues will also be of a different nature, Paul. 